as gals get older and more successful and accomplished and acquire all of the wants and needs out of life, a house, a car, the furniture, the career, the diplomas free framed in mahogany and all that stuff, um, they expect as a bare minimum that or more out of the guy that they're going to select over a long-term basis. Um, doesn't matter for short-term hookups, doesn't matter for fun, doesn't matter for what happens in Vegas, stays in Vegas. But on a long-term basis, women have a very strong demand for a guy that is at a better level than them. Uh, it's often been said that at their level or higher, but if we're being honest, women don't want to look at an equal. They want to look up to a giant. They want to be with somebody that's better than them. So the pool becomes narrow. Uh, it becomes narrow for a number of reasons. As men start to age in their 30s and 40s, they often find themselves divorced. Um, you know, the women that they were with have uh, usually untied the knot. Uh, eight out of 10 times, it's women that are untying the knot. It's not guys. Uh, so they've either become bored, dissatisfied, whatever it happens to be, and decided to uh, leave the marriage. And um, that ruffles the feathers of the dude. It's going to cause, it's, it, it throws a monkey wrench into his life. Uh, I've heard a lot of women complain that when they meet guys um, around their age or older, as they're in their 40s, um, there's not a lot of guys that are at their level or better. And a lot of times it's because these dudes have been divorce raped. Um, they've had their family assets cut in half because it goes into a pile, you cut it in half, she takes half, he takes half. That's the way it generally works. Um, she often gets custody of the kids, which usually means that in addition to any maintenance or alimony that he may be paying, he might be paying a certain amount of child support. And um, that makes it quite difficult for him to do what it is he's gonna do. The good news for most guys that are doing really well in life is they manage to deal with that bullshit and they sort of move past it. Um, but it's the average guy out there, probably like 80 to 90% of guys out there that go through the untying of the knot that find themselves worse off financially than what they were when they were uh, together as a family. So a lot of these gals, they'll meet these guys on dating apps and um, they're interested, but they're not seriously interested because they haven't got the scratch to um, allow them to look up at them. So there's that as well. Um, sassy is a word that you often hear about these um, success, I wanna say success objects, but that's what men are. Men are success objects, women are beauty objects. These successful women, uh, sass, boss girl, um, career woman, you know, stuff like that, is generally interpreted as bad by guys. Um, they want sweet and sexy, which is generally good. So they've narrowed their options is one of the biggest problems that they're dealing with because that's what we've been told to do. Go out in the workforce, get a degree, climb the corporate ladder, make good money. And you hear these women say it all the time on Ladies Night on the podcast. Like, you know, when you ask them the question, well, what do you bring to the table? And their answer is, well, I've got my house and it's paid for. Or I have a small mortgage and I have my Tesla and it works very well and my beautiful furniture and I'm a dog mom or a cat mom or something like that. So I'm responsible. And she's describing what makes a man attractive, having resources and competency skills. Um, she's not describing what makes a woman attractive to successful men over 40, which is basically femininity and sweetness and kindness and usefulness in his life and being respectful. So they find themselves in a situation with a much narrower dating pool uh, making it extremely hard for them. If you're a successful guy over 40, you will have no trouble whatsoever matching with women over 40 that have careers, have their own homes, whether they paid for it themselves or they acquire it through divorce. You'll have no trouble whatsoever. There's lots of them out there. One of the problems, though, is there's not a lot of them are very attractive uh, beyond the sassy boss girl sort of stuff, but I'll get into that in a minute. Um, the next point that I jotted down here is that Successful men really don't want successful women, which I kind of alluded to earlier. Um, I, you know, I can go back to this conversation that I had. I was on this podcast with uh, D Danica Patrick. Um, she's a ex NASCAR race car driver, I think. Maybe did some open wheel stuff. 
Um, I was on her podcast a couple years ago and she would be what most people would like classify as your typical successful career woman. Uh, had a great career, made lots of money. I think she has her own wine brand right now. Um, she's attractive for her, you know, for her age, um, well-spoken, intelligent, but it's not what makes women attractive to men. Um, she said to me during the podcast, cause we were talking about, uh, being challenged and I've heard lots of other women say this too. So it's not just in this one conversation, but they like to portray or suggest that, um, men like to be challenged in a relationship. And I don't know where they got this notion from, um, maybe sitcoms, stuff like that, because every single time you watch a Hollywood sitcom, the father or the man in the relationship is portrayed as a bumbling idiot, total retard. And the uh, wife or girlfriend is portrayed as the savior of the show. Uh, she could do nothing wrong. She's an angel. She's a saint. She's perfect. Solves all the problems with his mishaps and his bumbling uh you know, ways. Maybe that's it. I don't know. But the, the, the challenge that these 40 plus year old women think that men want is not what they want. Um, men want to challenge at work. They want to challenge to make money. They want to, they want to be challenged in the, uh, in the realm of success, in the realm of dealing with putting a dent in the universe and doing something of some importance. They don't want to deal with that when they come home. They want to come home to a nice meal. They want to come home to kindness and softness and warmth and sweetness. They don't want to walk in the front door and be challenged. Oh, we got to return this. We got to go to this store. We have to go and do this. On Put this in your calendar date because we're going to go to my such and such extended girlfriend's cousin's uh, wedding, whatever the hell it is. They don't want to deal with the obscure notion that while they're putting out fires all day in their professional world, and doing something of some significance that they're also going to be challenged by their wife to do or girlfriend to do other things beyond what they're already dealing with. So they really don't want successful women, which is interesting because the narrative women have been told and they've heard for a long time is successful men want successful women. There are some guys out there that will use the sound bites and, and, you know, say something like, well, I want, um, I want a good partner in life. I want an equal partner. Um, when guys say they want an equal partner, they what they're basically saying is they want a ride or die girl. All right, they want a ride or die bitch. Basically, is what they're saying. Um, she's my partner in crime. She's got my back. She's on the purpose. She's on the mission. It's basically ride or die. When women say that they want an equal partnership, which is what they generally use to describe the relationship that they're seeking over the age of 40, what that usually means, most men find, is they want to make an equal contribution to important decisions and choices in the relationship, but make none of the financial contribution to that. I'm going to say that again. They want to make about 50% of a contribution to important decisions that are involved in the scope of the relationship, but they don't want to make much of an input financially to pay for the cost of that. Some might argue they might put in, you know, 10 or 20 or 25%, but it's not generally an equal contribution that he puts in. There are some rare cases where it is though, however. But generally speaking, again, you know, for the second point, you know, the other point that I wanted to make here is that these guys that these women want don't generally want these women because they're not looking for a successful woman. The other thing that men have come to understand is that women don't share their pot of gold with men. Um, there are guys out there that will gold dig successful women. It usually happens with younger guys um, that are players, uh, fuck boys, you know, is a term I've you know, heard women use often. Um, but they're the younger guys that are targeting the older women uh, because they've got riches and, and success. Uh, to help them pay for their lives. So sugar mamas, you know, if you will. But it's not that common. There are, interestingly, a contingent of very successful 40 plus year old women. When I say very successful, uh, I'm going to elaborate on that and, and tell you that they are making or they're worth eight figures plus. Not seven figures, not six figures. Six is in the hundreds of thousands. Sevens is in the millions, single digit. Beyond that, into the tens of millions. 
they have a very large net worth. Often it's either inherited from family or it's uh, acquired through divorce. Uh, but they have a lot of money. And there is a contingent of these older women that will just spend money, believe it or not, on younger guys uh, to scratch the intimacy itch, to have a, a guy with them along for a certain event, for example. Um, there's lots of, not lots, there's a handful of men that actually fill this role. Uh, but that's that's on the extreme side of things. It's not very common. Uh, but generally speaking, like I said earlier for the second point, successful men really don't generally want successful women um, because the success brings problems and attitude and stuff like that. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here, that clips from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment, you'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books, and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.